Mr. Nkomo emphasized that he did not consider himself an exile and that his intention was to return to Zimbabwe once he'd got some assurance from the government there that he'd be safe. It's possible that his old friend, Kenneth Gondor of Zambia, who arrives coincidentally in Britain tomorrow, will be able to mediate. Certainly, Mr. Nkomo seems eager to keep lines of communication with Zimbabwe open. In his interview with Jeremy Paxman, he was anxious to stress the need for reconciliation and to downplay the dangers of tribal war. Dr. Nkomo, on reflection, do you think that it was right for you to leave Zimbabwe? Well, I don't think it needs any reflection. It was a question of threat to my life. I had to live, I had to be somewhere in order that I'm able to try and help in, in settling the, the problem that had arisen. There was no doubt in your mind that your life was in danger? I don't think there is anybody who is in doubt. Uh, for three people having been killed in my house, it was quite obvious what would have happened if I had remained. Where do you believe the threat to your life came from? Well, it came from the 5th Brigade when they invaded my house and reinsected and killed the three people in the house. What's your view of the 5th Brigade? Well, I think I did say my, my, my point when it was being formed. I said it to the Prime Minister that uh, it was a pity a brigade out side the National Army was being formed and that I feared it would be used as a political army apart from the, the, the National Army. It appears it is being used so. Many people suggest that it's a tribal army. Well, it could be a tribal army, but in fact not a Shona tribal army as some people say it is. They, some people believe that because the fifth grade is, is, is uh, made up of uh, Shona speaking young people and therefore it, uh, its actions are actions of the Shona against Ndebele. I think this is a misrepresentation. I don't think it is so. There are many people in Matabeleland who believe that when they're confronted by a Shona section of the army and they're in Ndebele's, that then that is a tribal issue. Well, uh, when you're confronted by people who speak a language and they do harm to your life, yes, you do come to wonder whether it is not uh, a tribal and complete Shona uh, against Ndebele. But here I am talking as one who knows that in fact it is not so. It is a mistake for anybody to believe that uh, the Shona uh, have organized against Ndebele. This is not so. If it's not a tribal issue, then what is it? It could be a political issue, as I said earlier uh, to the Prime Minister when it was being formed. I, I, I said I feared it could be a political party um, uh, army. Uh, and, and this possibly is what it is, and not a tribal as such. It does not embrace the tribe, the people of Shona-speaking Shona people uh, as against in the Mary. How much has your party suffered at the hands of the 5th Brigade? Oh, quite a lot. We have lost quite a number of people, some of them top people in the party. And I almost lost my life myself. You can see how serious it is. Many people in Matabili Land, many members of your own party in Matabili Land, have told me that what's really happening is an attempt to decapitate your political organization. Well, it may be so may be so, but uh, again, it's, it's a problem. If it is so, it's a problem that we should look into and see that that doesn't happen because it is not possible for Mr. Mugabe or anybody else to decapitate a party like Zapo just that way, by, by, by using violence. Uh, if one wants to, to, to uh, have a one party, that might be the thing, a one party state. I don't think it would be the right thing to go about it in a violent manner, because you will not win the hearts of the people. If, 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 if they want that, if Mugabe wanted that, the best thing to do is to organize, to win the hearts of the people and show what he can do for them, and not to, to shoot them into uh, submission. Do you believe that it's happening as part of Mr. Mugabe's policy for a one party state? I wouldn't say it, it is but it may be. It 
may be that. Do you concede that the government did have and does have a continuing security problem in Matabili land? Well, the unfortunate thing is this, that the extent of the problem has never been revealed. That is unfortunate. I had tried to suggest to government that it was important to have a parliamentary select committee in order to discover the, the extent of the problem. But there's no disputing things like the kidnapping of the tourists, the kidnapping of white yes, farmers, yes. the murdering of white farmers, four killed only this weekend. Depends who kills them, you see. Who do you believe killed them? I don't know. This is what, what we have got to discover. Who kills them? Who kidnapped these people? The who government claims that it's former zebra fighters. Well, former zebra, not zebra. You see that? The difference between former zebra. Who is responsible for former zebra but government? Not, not ZAPU. So this is the position. The on government it. claims that ZAPU supports the dissidents. No, this is a mistake. Uh, if the government believed that, uh, as I said at home, uh, if the government believed that, the best thing to do is to prove that it is so. This is why an inquiry was important, to establish that. But there is nothing established. Do you condemn the dissidents? I've condemned them several times at home. Do you condemn them now? Of course, yes. I mean, who would not condemn uh, dissidents? The name dissident itself is outside the course, and therefore we condemn this type of thing. Why was it that Mr. Mugabe dismissed you from government? Oh, no, we're not going to go back and <laughs> digging all graves. He would claim, I think, that it was because you hadn't, didn't have a full wholehearted commitment. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely wouldn't think that way. If there's anybody who put pull his weight on that government, it was me. Do you feel, sir, that you still have a part to play in the reconstruction of Zimbabwe? I think so, yes. As long as I'm leader of my party, I think I still have a, a part to play. Even if I were not leader, just as a citizen, I still have or would have an obligation to... to to assist my country to move forward. Is there any possibility at this time of an amalgamation between your party and Mr. Mugabe's party? Well, uh, again, here depends on how we go about it. If we go about it seriously, uh, try and discover uh, the ills and so on, and how we could remedy those ills, there is nothing impossible on this globe. But at a time when what you yourself call a party army is attacking and killing supporters of your party, it must make the possibility of an agreed one-party state rather more remote, doesn't it? Uh, no. Things have happened in this world. Very serious, much more possibly much more serious than what has happened. Wars have taken place and people have gone to war against each other, work together today, the last world war. The people who are enemies are today allies. And it means people facing the problems and doing everything possible to try and, and resolve them. I think the people in Zimbabwe are capable of that, of looking back, seeing where they've gone wrong, go back to retrace their steps, if need be, so as to solve the problem of Zimbabwe people are talking about the possibility of civil war in your country? No, I don't think that is correct. It is the people who assume there is a problem between the Shona and the Bela. These are the people who are talking about a civil war. Uh, it's a problem, a very serious problem that has arisen in our country. It needs careful handling, it needs patience, it needs object objectivity, that, that type of thing. I think we need that. The problem can't really be solved as long as you're outside the country, can it? Did I say I was coming to stay here permanently? Didn't I say when I first arrived here and that uh, I'll be here temporarily, I'll be going home? My plans have not changed. Joshua Nkomo talking there.